will all agree with me that I'm an incredibly lucky ambassador to have such a passionate, dynamic and effective um, Prime Minister Strait Envoy and that I'm also incredibly lucky that he's here in the Philippines. I think the fact that the Prime Minister's Trade Envoy is here in the Philippines is a testament to our ambition for our trade between the Philippines and the UK. And if I can just spend a few minutes to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing on the business and trade side over the last few months, I'll probably start with the very first week of January when we had some great news when we heard that first there was a massive investments from Diageo uh, into Don Papa Rum and that very same week we had Inchcape do a joint venture with Cap Motors. That sets the tone for this year. I think it's going to be a really exciting year between our two countries. The week after that, we had Secretary Jokno in London leading um, a delegation, giving an economic briefing, talking to investors in the UK, raising awareness about the opportunities in the Philippines. And you won't be too surprised to hear that there was a lot of interest amongst those investors. And indeed, the delegation went to the London Stock Exchange Group, spent some time there. And I think there's a lot of the work that was um, uh, set out over that week in London that we're now following up on here. There have been a lot of exciting developments in the UK from a trade perspective, not least our accession to the CPTPP uh, just a few weeks ago, which is an incredibly exciting development for us as the UK. Now that we've left the European Union, it's a huge market, it's a gold standard in terms of trade, and we're going to be part of it, and we're going to be um, really uh, uh, dynamic and ambitious in terms of what we can do with the CPTPP. But closer to home here in the Philippines, we're about to launch our new trading scheme, which is going to replace GSP+, Plus, which is the, uh, the, scheme, the scheme that we adhere to when we were members of the European Union. Our new scheme is called DCTS, which stands for the Developing Countries Trading Scheme. We're going to be launching that on the 7th of June. I hope many of you will be able to be there. It's a scheme that's incredibly ambitious, that has added new lines, that has tried to uh, listen to the um, uh, voices that we heard over consultations, in particular on simplifying rules of origins. And we've done a, a thorough analysis of the opportunities for uh, Filipino business through the CTS done by the Boston Consulting Group that we will be communicating about as well, so that businesses in the Philippines are clear about the opportunities and the processes, which are again simplified, to access um, the CTS and further boost our trade. Richard has just spoken about trade numbers. Our bilateral trade is higher than ever, and that's incredibly exciting for us. We are not only back to pre-pandemic levels, but we're surpassing its pre-pandemic levels. So as you can tell, we're ambitious, dynamic, and, and hungry for increased trade between our two countries, and we expect there to be a lot um, happening over the course of the year. I don't want to take too much time. I know we've got lots of um, wonderful colleagues that are about to start but I will just say that to complement the trade and the business side, we've done a lot as an embassy to really engage with the new administration, listen to the administration's priorities, and really lean in and respond to some of the needs that have been identified, whether that is on disaster preparedness, climate and environment, renewable energy, very much so, obviously, in particular, offshore wind, uh, tech, uh, Richard mentioned tech. We have London Tech Week coming up. We've got quite a few Filipino firms that will be going there the week of the 12th of June. And we've got a lot of other sectors that we're really now uh, prioritizing, including cyber, both from a commercial perspective and the policy perspective, and indeed a lot of other issues, which include maritime security. And I circle back to what Monsi was talking about at the very beginning about media, fundamental importance of media um, in this country as in every other country, it is a pillar of democracy, and we celebrate that, and we will continue to forever champion media freedom here in the Philippines. It is one of our priorities, and you, can, um, uh, you have my commitment that this will remain the case. Thank you very, very much, and um, thanks for having me.